My artist is Martin here, who is from Safari Gold. Hey, so Martin, would you like to tell about your business? What is Safari Gold? Well, thank you, Sue. Yes, Safari Gold started quite a long time ago, um, and I'm really not the uh, gold artist in the family or the jeweler. My brother was. My brother has since passed on, and his son, my nephew, has taken over. And, and I was the just the marketing guy, say, what if I could sell a little bit of this in the USA? Let's see if we can find a market because not everybody gets to go to Africa on safari to buy top world class jewelry. Um, on the other hand, uh, we needed money. We didn't have much money. But I finally sent my brother some money and he sent me some pieces. Uh, and that's how we got started. Um, wh how, why did you pick Mariposa to set up business for such a worldwide thing? Well, well I originally uh, lived in the Bay Area and I started there the, as a sideline business. I'm, I'm a former high-tech marketing executive in Silicon Valley and I always said one day I'm going to go up to the mountains and forget to come home. And that's and, what and, you did, and, huh? And my, <laughs> and I, and it's I, easy to do in Mariposa. And I picked Mariposa because uh, I could still get back to the Bay Area when I have to, uh, which isn't often nowadays. I can still race back in three hours. And secondly, I could uh, live and work on the internet very well, you know, which is not always the case here in the Sierras. Like my friend in Sonora, they just cannot run a business like this because they don't have high-speed internet access. So that's where you do most of your selling is on the internet? Right. Safari Gold is a very much an internet business today. It's got its own website, which is very old and creaking, but it works. <laughs> uh, I, I'm propping it up. You might even get a glance of the new one coming. But we're also linked from a lot of other places. The, the work that I, which we're getting to that I personally make now, uh, I sell on Etsy as well and, and other sites like that, which of course you have to be the artist. But I, uh, I met Martin actually in my B group. He started coming to my B group and then I got to see his beautiful um, safari gold designs at the Gem and Mineral Show a few years ago and I bought this uh, beautiful bracelet. I don't know if you guys could see it here. But I just fell in love with it. It's silver, and the black in it is made of giraffe hair. I thought it was so beautiful and unusual. And then I was very lucky. A year later, he gave me this earring and necklace set as a gift, and I, I absolutely love it. You want to tell a little bit about it? or? So this is something my, my brother pioneered, and, and our company is still one of the major ones around the world that work with the giraffe hair. I don't know where it gets it comes from. They've never told me specifically. I know it's the tail of it the It feels giraffe, so weird. It, it, it's so thick. Elephant hair is illegal, right? And a lot of people want elephant hair. But giraffe hair, which right now is still legal, it has the same characteristics, except can be finer, can be built in a fine jewelry. If you yeah, look at the piece that Sue's wearing here, even the black is giraffe hair. So it's a sandwich of silver, a, a solid a silver on the back, uh, giraffe hair and then a pattern's cut in it and of course all these designs originated in Africa itself uh, used to be if you wanted a piece like this you had to go to a top safari lodge some of the duty free shops he's done special collections for different uh, African countries and and we continue to to do that I don't you do safari shows too I know you, right. you've so, taken off to some trade shows so that's becoming our big growth market here in the states is not just to go to on the web but I go to the big safari shows when we can get in them. I have to go to Dallas a lot, Texas, um, filing a lot of paperwork this week just to get into Dallas and Houston for next year. And for those shows now, my nephew comes over. He's a master jeweler. He wows them with some expensive, fancy stuff, pieces that he makes uh, like Sue's the, wearing or like this. Now, the picture that's coming up, these are uh, cutouts, and you have some samples here. And don't you do these yourself, Martin? Right, so first of all, you see there are lots of little African shape pieces. The continent of Africa always makes for good shape, and we'll be selling those forever. I've taken over making them. Don't, don't tell my nephew yet, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, it was a secret. Uh, but, but when I need 40 or 20 at a time, which I sometimes do because we sell them to African charities or health groups or work groups, um, then, then I certainly still get them made in, in South Africa um, and then some of the work he's doing is in Europe as well now. Because I put him on a website, he got elected as a, one of the top designers in Vogue Europe uh, for this year, although we'd accidentally left up another website, FodenDesigns.com, 
uh, which my brother was using to land a major contract. But today I make these. I cut them out here, sit at the top of the mountain in Mariposa. And the novelty I've come up with is to put little gemstones at certain places on it. So this one, the lady wanted a Tanzanite gemstone where South Africa is, right? And, and last, this week I've, uh, uh, on my workbench, close. I have another little African and she wanted uh, a different gemstone where Rwanda is. And unless you're African, you don't even know where those places are, right? So, so that's a novelty, and um, I've started, to, we'll always be making little Africas as long as we live. This is me playing with a new lion face here. Um, very popular will be items like well, that's neat. A, a cross yeah. over Africa, or, or a, a heart over Africa, or a heart in a cross over Africa. Um, and, and the one I'm, uh, my, my new idea of the week, uh, which I, I don't know why, it's an old idea, came back, is uh, footprints. So we're going to do lots of uh, footprints, usually over Africa, but at the same time, our theme isn't really Africa. It's safari and wildlife jewelry, and they've been promising me the American wildlife collection for a long time, and it doesn't come, and it doesn't come. So guess what? I'm doing it myself. If you live in Mariposa or near Mariposa, you've got to have a butterfly, right? <laughs> but once again, Pierce Silver hand cut. It's hard to cut out those little cutouts, too. That's and, not and easy. It's got to get a lot finer than this, and I use lots of tiny, fine blades, um, and then I'm going to start putting gemstones on these. We're trying to get into the Big Sheep Foundation show because they have a lot of hunters there, so i got to make some Big Sheep jewelry. I'm just trying to figure out how to get the um, horns to look just right and to be rough. It's just, this is a work in, work in progress. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. Now, let's talk about the bracelet that you're wearing. I know, isn't that how you started the business, kind of, making right. these bracelets? So this is the first thing I found in the U.S., a very big market for, this is called the elephant hand knot bracelet. Of course, it's made of silver, but this design is an old African design where the African um, herdsmen in the field would pick elephant hair literally out of the thorn trees, tie knot bracelets, and it's got a magic sliding knot to it. So it fits anybody. You see how it slides and it opens, or it slides down if it's working well, way down. I make and sell these as other, at one of the only two or three people. So it fits them. anybody. It fits anybody. We started adding charms to them. To make a better fit, um, we, we, I do ask them for sizes today. I've been doing them. You want four knots in copper, no problem. If you want, um, it looks prettier out of the bag yeah, here. <laughs> if you want silver and gold with a gold knot and a silver, no problem, because I don't have to send off to Africa and wait three months anymore. I just make them. We were at the last show and somebody came by and asked us for three color. We never thought of that. We just never thought of silver, gold, and elephant hair. Of course, we don't use real elephant hair, but as I've done here. After a competitor did synthetic elephant hair, we came up with artificial elephant hair. Um, and this one I've actually been using for almost a year. I'm testing it just to see how long it lasts. Before you uh, start selling it. So, so Sue's seen this around a lot. It's got, we're selling it already, but I still want to know how long it's going to last. Um, it's got, uh, I'm using rose gold coated wire here to bring the uh, price in a reason. And now, now you're called Safari Gold. Do you do a lot of gold items or? Well, we we do do some gold items, and in fact, I make these bracelets in solid gold. If you've got to spare four thousand dollars, ooh, scares, is that what they run now? Yes, the wow. heck out of me. <laughs> 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 I did do one for Christmas, um, very carefully. Uh, um, I just no room for waste, you know. But luckily, new materials are showing up in the states here. Like I love this pink gold. It's uh, called fill gold. It's twenty percent. It's Real the rose-filled gold. gold, yeah. yeah. And so, it, it, to all intents and purposes, it tests and looks like real gold. It just isn't solid gold. And as I said, at the show, somebody came by and asked us about the three-tone. And on a Sunday morning, it was slow. I said, let me try and make one in the booth. We sold it before I finished making it. And um, uh, we continue to sell them. He has a three-knot one. The only reason I haven't shipped this this week is because the lady wanted two knots on them. So you have to redo it, huh? But I joined Sue's group just to learn how to make these. All right. And, of course, she didn't know how to make them. 
per nope. se. <laughs> you I do, wire wrap. I do a lot of wire cool. wrap, but I've never tried to make that. So. Now, you can see Martin's work at the um, Art Hop on Saturday, which is the second Saturday of the month. Um, and what, what date is that? That is the 14th. 14th. 14th in front of my store, 5023 Highway 140. And then you could also go on to Martin's website here. I think there's a picture oh, of it right here, if you want to yeah, tell that's, what that's Safari Go. That last picture gives you a taste, as you see. There's always giraffes wandering around in the background, even though our logo doesn't per se have it, because of our history and our background, and because ladies like giraffes. You know, I've seen real giraffes. I've been well, on real safari, and I've seen them up close, and I think they're ugly. But ladies like them, so I like them. <laughs> they're cute and comical. And they'll always be there in the giraffe stuff. And my sister's nickname actually was Giraffe, and part of this idea was hers. Uh, she introduced me to my brother. It makes stupid sense to get the jewelry business going. And through Sue's help and two other ladies in Mariposa, I found out how to make these bracelets and make him... Uh, now he makes them in rings, earrings, all kinds of stuff. They're, it, it's, it's really neat. 